well. Right, next caller is Hassan in Ken- <coughs> excuse me, Kensington. Hassan, hi. Uh, hello, hi. Has Keir Starmer lost the Muslim vote for the Labour Party? And what concrete steps does he need to, may, uh, to take to recover those voters? Now, Labour is reportedly polling British Muslims over concerns that it's lost a significant number of Muslims who usually vote Labour because of its stance on Gaza. Now, this happened, if you think back to the Iraq war, um, a lot of the Muslim vote in 2005 went to the Liberal Democrats. I think they... Did they get their record number of seats in 2005? I think it, I think that's right, I yes, because it, it actually went down in 2010, even though they came into government. I mean, Hassan, I'm going to ask, are you a Muslim and has he lost your vote? Yes, I'm a Muslim and he has definitely lost my vote. And I think just uh, I mean, 83% of the Muslim community voted for Labour in 2019. I campaigned up and down in various constituencies for Labour because I was in a safe Labour seat. But I'm not going to do that unless there's a radical change. And even then, it's very unlikely. Michael Crick, um, let's come to you first on this. And how, how important is the Muslim vote to Labour? Or does it, do, it obviously depends on the seat. But there are some seats where if 50% of the Muslim vote defected, they would lose. Yeah, I think... Um uh, it, it, there are about two mis- a million, I think, Muslim voters in this country. Um, and uh, a lot of them are in marginal seats, you know, places like the Pennines, where there are, uh, there are quite a few uh, seats that Labour is hoping to win back from the Conservative. Or, well, or, seats or, like or, Keithley. Or, indeed, mm. indeed. Uh, Robbie's uh, constituency. Um, and um, I think the problem, one of the problems here is that Labour... Because of what happened in the Corbyn years and the perception that Labour had become anti-Semitic, that Labour under Starmer have bent over backwards to show they're not anti-Semitic and therefore they have ended up being more pro-Israel in the last few months uh, than they might otherwise have been. And that inevitably has alienated uh, lots of Muslim voters. Now, it's interesting because, of course, the problem was before that Labour under Corbyn had alienated a lot of Jewish voters. Um, but there are a lot fewer Jewish voters in this country, only about three quarters, about a, a third of a million, isn't it, yep. uh, Barry? No. And, uh, and that they tend to be, I mean, there's, there's a tiny number of suit, seats where the Jewish vote matters. But, um, but it's, so it's, either way, it, you know, if they, if they were to start saying, OK, well, we'll listen to these uh, uh, opinion polls and focus groups and uh, we'll sort of uh, soften our position on, or harden our position, depending on your point of view on Israel, you know, the trouble is they're just going to look like a, well, they're going to look like what they are, a bunch of opportunists who just float this way or other, depending on what uh, the, the focus groups and the opinion polls say. I mean... You know, they'll, they will. They, most Muslim voters will stick with Labour, I think, but inevitably they're going to lose some, and um, I don't think there's much now they can do to get them back. Um, Barry, you represent Brent North. I don't know what percentage of your constituents are Muslim, but is, is this a concern for you? Look, I hate vote bank politics. Uh, I think Michael's analysis is is broadly correct. But I I really hate the fact that some people think that because you are of this religion, you ought to vote in this particular way. Um, and we see far too much of it. Um, I, Hassan, I, look, you, you probably know I have disagreed with uh, my leader over uh, a number of issues around Gaza, in particular over a ceasefire. Um, I was one of those who, who um, voted in, in that vote for the ceasefire. Um, I, I do think it's important that, um, you know, the Labour position should be observant of international law, um, it should respect human rights, and it should be based on principle. And what I fear in our politics is that we get to a situation where people are thinking, I need to take a stance because that helps me with this particular demographic group. Let, let's let just vote on the principles that we have. And, and Hassan, look, I, I understand why you and, and many, many people are angry about the, the, the situation and, and feel betrayed by the Labour Party as well as by the Conservative government on this. Um, but a general election is, is about a great many things, not 
just one issue. And sometimes, you know, people want to say this issue is so important to me that I'm going to use my vote to uh, to um, make that impact. Um, but what I do hope is that in doing so, um, people don't allow a, a worse government to come in um, or indeed in, in any particular situation a worse MP to come in. Um, so I would say... Vote, you see, the sounds in Kensington, which is now a marginal seat, it was a Labour seat, it then went Tory in 2019, but they will certainly be hoping to win that back again. And if there are many more Hassans in Kensington uh, taking the stance that he's taking, that could be a seat that you don't win. Well, yeah, but what we have to do is we have to operate in politics according to our principles, not according to what we think is electorally advantageous. Because people will respect us if we act in accordance with our principles. Um, they won't respect you if, if they think, well, actually, they'll say one thing one day and another thing the next in order simply to curry favour okay. with the electorate. It, it's got to be, this is, you know, when when I responded to people who'd written to me on this, I sent out exactly the same letter, whether they had written to me from the Jewish community or from the Muslim community, and I made that clear. And But what I started off with was saying, here are the principles by which I will judge the situation and by which I will act. Um, I didn't s start off by saying, I support this side or I support that side. And so many people want politicians to say, you've got to be on my side. No, we, we've actually got to set out the principles upon which we behave, upon which we act, and right. upon which we take policy Rachel. decisions. Well, and I, I think that it's almost irrelevant whether Labour changes its position on what's going on in the Middle East functionally in terms of what happens in the Middle East. It makes a difference to how many Muslims are going to vote for Labour. If you're looking at one particular constituency, Kensington, and I think it's called Bayswater now. Is it? It's been redrawn. That's a marginal Labour Tory seat. So if Hassan isn't going to vote for Emma Dent Code or whoever the Labour candidate is, Joe she's, she's an independent now, yeah, Joe Powell, um, uh, is he going to vote for Elizabeth Bucken? You know, uh, do you see, so yeah. where does the vote go? This is a completely internal... Well, he probably votes Liberal Democrat, well, well, not at does all. does he? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it, this is just an internal conversation, and we all know that Keir Starmer's not going to do anything to skid as he walks across the floor carrying the, the Ming vase. So that's where we are. This is about Labour not wanting to lose... Uh, accepting that they will lose a proportion, a, percent, a small percentage, I would imagine, of the Muslim vote as a result of their decision to back Hassan, what Israel's doing if you're not in gonna Gaza. Vote, if you're not going to vote Labour, who will you back? I will back the Greens. I have a lot of respect for Barry and his principal position, but that is not the position of his leader, and that's why I think it's a, as a matter of principle I cannot vote for the Labour Party. OK. There's, a, there's another problem for Labour here, and that is that the Labour Party has got rather lazy in a lot of seats and has become reliant on, or, well, you know, leaders of the Muslim community to get the vote out, and they're very successful at that. And sometimes that's had unfortunate consequences, as we've mm. seen in, you know, in vote fraud cases in, in Birmingham and in, 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 in Tower Hamlets. And so... It, you, and, and we've seen uh, how Labour have lost uh, certain leading Muslim councillors in the last few weeks um, and other, other figures have left the party altogether over this. So it's not a simple matter of individuals making a choice. It's, it's a matter of also of these powerful figures influencing much wider groups to perhaps but desert Michael, the party. No, no, yeah. I know, it's, I've got, I've I know got, it is. I've, I've got, got to get operates. Robbie yeah. involved Sorry. in this as well and then we need to go to the news. So I think there's two, there's two points I want to make. Um, one, uh, I think for far too long, actually, Labour have taken the Muslim vote for granted and not absolutely focused. Or, and that actually picks up on the point that you've just been making. So that vote 
I think, has been taken for, far, for granted for far too long. Second point is Labour are all over the place on this issue. Uh, in my seat, you have seen independents uh, now wanting to stand to take that Labour vote. You have seen um, Labour councillors resign from Bradford Council to become mm. independent. And we have seen within Parliament um, uh, Labour MPs resign from the shadow cabinet uh, to take a backbench position uh, on the Labour benches. And when we are dealing with such an important issue like what is going on in the Middle East and you have a party like Labour that are wanting to be in government and they can't get a solidified position on such an important issue, I think that rings alarm bells actually for something that is going to continue to be such an important issue beyond the general election, whether that takes place um, what, at whatever point in this year. So you have a party that were wanting to get into government they are all over the place on this issue and yet you have a um, a, a vote base which we know looking at the 2019 um, results about 80 80 percent ish of predominantly muslim voters voted labor where Labour have been relying on that vote base for far too long and really uh, when I represent Keefley that has and I'm proud to represent a strong predominantly um, Mus uh, Muslim community, predominantly um, Pakistani Kashmiri community and I have to really question what has Labour been delivering for that particular community for a significant amount of time? I would okay. question that. I'm so sure what's Barry your position no. on the ceasefire then? Well, so, my, so uh, quite rightly, we want to achieve a, a, a sustainable, sure. a sustainable um, ceasefire position. <laughs>